So with index laws, we know that when we multiply, we need to add the powers. And we can see that because we know that x to the power of 5 means x times x times x times x times x, multiplying together five times. And we are multiplying that by x cubed, which is x times x times x. So all together, we are multiplying x together eight times. So this is going to be x to the power of eight. And we can just do five, add three. So when we're multiplying, we're adding the powers. So this is x to the power of eight. When we're dividing, the opposite thing happens. So t to the power of 8 divided by t to the power of 2, we're going to subtract those powers. So that's going to be t to the power of 6. OK, with part c, we've got to multiply. We've also got some actual integers here to work with as well. So 3 times 5 is 15. And then I'm going to look at the m part. And we've got m squared times m to the power of 6. And we know that when we multiply, we add the power. So that's m to the power of 8. 15m to the power of 8. OK, and then with part D, everything in this bracket is being cubed. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can just cube each part separately. Or we can say this is 3x to the power of 4y squared times another 3x to the power of 4y squared times another 3x to the power of 4y squared. We're timesing this whole thing by itself and then by itself again. And then we can look 3 times 3 times 3, which would be the same as just looking at the 3 and cubing it. That is 27. And then I've got x to the power of 4 times another x to the power of 4 times another x to the power of 4. And we know that when we times, we add those powers, so x to the power of 12. And then I've got y squared, y squared, y squared, which is going to be y to the power of 6. And that's your final answer. You could have just looked at this and said, OK, I'm going to cube each part. So 3 cubed is 27. When you do a power of a power, so here we've got power of a power, you do multiply those powers together. So x to the power of 4 to the power of 3 is x to the power of 12. And then y squared to the power of 3, you've got a power of a power, so you times them together, and that's y to the power of 6. So same thing, but it might just be easier to think of it like this and actually write it out. Um, but as you practice, you should be able to do it the other way as well. 27, x to the power of 12, y to the power of 6. OK, question 2. And we've got to do the same thing again. So w to the power of 7 times w to the power of 4. When we multiply, we add the powers. The bases have to be the same has to be raising um, to the same uh, letter. So we've got w to the power of 11 there, because 7 out of 4 is 11. For part b, 10b to the power of 5 divided by 2b cubed. Now I'm going to look at the number part first. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So I've got 5b to the power of 2. And I've got the 2 because I've taken away the powers because I'm dividing. So when we divide normal numbers, we can just do 10 divided by 2, but these are powers. So we need to do um, think about our index laws. The fact that we're dividing, we're going to take away. So 5b squared is your answer for that one. And then part c, I've got 8n to the power of 5 times 7n to the power of 6. The 8 times the 7 makes 56. And then n is going to be to the power of 11, because that's 5 add 6. When we multiply, we add the powers. And then for part d, I'm doing a similar thing as I did in the last question. I'm going to do 2xy to the power of 4 times 2xy to the power of 4 times 2xy to the power of 4. And it's just that y that is being raised to the power of 4, not the x as well. The x technically has a 1 here. It's just to the power of 1, but we don't write that. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 2 cubed. x times x times x is x cubed. And then y to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4 times y to the power of 4 would be y to the power of 12. OK, and then we've got a power of a power. And we said that when we do a power of a power, we times those powers together. So that would be w to the power of 35. Part b is a similar thing to if we had it in a fraction. We are dividing. And we know the line in a fraction means divide. So look at each part in turn. I've got 24 divided by 8. And that would be 3. 
I've then got x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 5. And when we divide, we take the powers away. So that's going to be x to the power of 3. And then I've got y cubed divided by y to the power of 7. And we're going to do 3 take away 7 because 3 is the power on the numerator and 7 is the power on the denominator. So we want to do that the right way around. 3 take away 7 is minus 4. So that's y to the power of minus 4. Now you can write that as 3x cubed over y to the power of 4 and leave that on the bottom of the fraction. That's absolutely the same thing. So either of those answers is absolutely fine. Okay, question 4, and we've got x to the power of 0. Now anything to the power of 0 is 1, with the exception maybe of 0 to the power of 0, but I'll let the uh, mathematicians fight that out. 56 divided by 8 is 7. And then I've got x to the power of 9 divided by x to the power of 3. And when we divide, we take away the powers, so x to the power of 6. For c, I've got 6 times 7, and that's going to be 42. And then I've got n to the power of 5 times n to the power of minus 5. And we know that when we times, we add the powers. But 5 add minus 5 is 0. So this is 42, n to the power of 0. And we know that n to the power of 0 is going to be 1. So I've got 42 multiplied by 1, which is just 42. OK, part D. And everything in this bracket is being squared. So I'm going to write 4x to the power of 5y cubed times by itself. 4 times 4 is 16. x to the power of 5 times x to the power of 5 is x to the power of 10, because we're adding when we're multiplying. y cubed times another y cubed is y to the power of 6. Perfect. And then 5a, I'm doing a power of a power, so that's w to the power of 27. And for part b, 64 divided by 8 is 8. x cubed divided by x, now remember that's x to the power of 1, so that's going to leave us with x to the power of 2. And y divided by y cubed, so we're doing 1 take away 3 for the power on the y, and that's going to be y to the power of minus 2. And again, you could write that as 8x squared over y squared. That's absolutely fine for that mark as well. Okay, question 6. 2 to the power of 5 times 2 to the power of 8. Now we've changed to now to have a number as the base, and that's absolutely fine. We just do exactly the same thing. That's going to be 2 to the power of 13. We've written that as a power of 2. It's basically saying write it as 2 to the power of something. For part b, 24 divided by 12 is 2. And then b to the power of 5 divided by b is b to the power of 4. Remember, you can just think of that b as being b to the power of 1. And the next one, 4c to the power of 8 times 7c. So 4 times 7 is 28. And then I've got c to the power of 8 times by another c. And remember, that's the same as thinking of it as c to the power of 1. And that is c to the power of 9 altogether, because when we multiply, we add the powers. Same thing here, I've got 5xy to the power of minus 2 times by itself, times by itself again. I'm cubing everything in the bracket. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. x times x times x is x cubed. And y to the power of minus 2 times y to the power of minus 2 times y to the power of minus 2, we would add those powers. So minus 2 add minus 2 add minus 2 is y to the power of minus 6. Question number seven, three to the power of four times three to the power of minus two. And when we multiply, we add the powers. Four add minus two is the same as four take away two. And that's just two. So this is three to the power of two. That base number stays the same. We've been asked to write it as a power of three. And then simplify three x to the power of 10, y to the power of five divided by 6xy cubed. Now, 3 divided by 6, be careful here, we're not doing 6 divided by 3, we're doing 3 divided by 6, and that would be a half, or 0 0.5. Then I've got x to the power of 10 divided by x, that's x to the power of 9, because I'm taking away the 1 from the 10. And then I've got y to the power of 5 divided by y cubed, and that is y squared. So you can write it like this, or you can write it like this. And that will get you full marks. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel for more.